Once you've grown your hydroponic crop, you're going to have to have a place to market it to be successful as a hydroponic grower in the business world. And uh, oftentimes marketing is the last thing that is talked about, but Linda, you and I know that it can't be the last thing that we talk about. Absolutely not, Bob. It should be the first thing that folks think about before they really get into production. So before we plant our first seed, before we plant our first transplant, or before we plant our first flower bulb, we've got to know where we're going to take this product once we get it grown. There's a number of different size growing operations here in Florida from very small to very large. And in some cases, the large growers, I would consider something in the range of maybe a half an acre or more in greenhouse space dedicated to uh, hydroponic production. Those would be sort of the large growers. And the market outlets that they would probably be targeting is perhaps going through some brokers that deal with uh, those particular products. They may be able to develop a marketing plan with a local chain store. There's a lot of distribution centers here in Florida that large growers can connect with. And in some cases, some of the large growers build a relationship with one another and form sort of a cooperative relationship in their, in their marketing. And of course, in flowers, I know that in some cases they can go, if they're large enough, to a wholesale distribution facility. But most of our flower growers are relatively small. How, how would a small grower best plan their marketing strategy? Well, Bob, the first thing would be to do a little bit market research like we talked about. Um, visit around with some of the, the florists, uh, look at trend, trends in magazines, things of that nature. Once you've decided on your crop, then probably the easiest place to get started with your sales program is at local farmers markets. That seems to be a growing trend all over the state. Uh, folks like fresh flowers, they're a change from the veggies. So I would start uh, my direct marketing program perhaps in a farmers market. Um, another really great way to develop a loyal following, Bob, is to actually sell your product right from your greenhouse. People are really interested in how you're producing that crop, who's producing that crop. So I think that's a real opportunity to teach folks about how the crop is being grown and get some good sales in the meantime. Good. I know that they're always an interest in going into these hydroponic greenhouses if the growers have time to show them. Well, that's a, that would be an excellent way to attract folks to to, to buy product right on their own property in the premises. I know that depending on where they're going to select their market, it's, it is going to certain, certainly dictate how they're going to package that product getting ready for market. That's right, Bob. It, it's, it's pretty specific as to where you're going on how you're going to put it out. I know with some of our large growers that are growing cucumbers or tomatoes, perhaps, they're going to have some pretty specific requirements that they're going to have to follow. That's going to be dictated by the buyer. These long-time popular European cucumbers have to be uh, prepared with this shrink wrap around them because they have a very thin skin and dehydrate very quickly. So that would be something that would be required in the industry if you were going to ship it. If you were going to sell it locally, you might not have to do that if you're going to pick it and sell it that same day. In the case of tomatoes, this is a local grower here that has cluster harvest tomatoes that he's got in a specific box that stack on top of each other and then he would probably have to palletize these, put them on a pallet, bond them together and be ready to put them on a truck. So in that case they'd have to have an, the ability in a packing house, a, a forklift and some mechanism to get that product onto the truck to be shipped for long distances. Cucumbers would be the same way, a specific box, a little bit smaller box makes an excellent display for them to ship those mini cucumbers and that's a beautiful product there. In the case of some of these other products that we sell, clamshells, the term clamshell refers to these plastic containers and there are all kinds of different sizes of these clamshells that are available and usually specific to the product that they're going to sell. In this case we all are probably familiar with strawberries. Mm -hmm. These are greenhouse grown strawberries that would be packaged in a clamshell to help preserve the quality of them. Uh, edible flowers like nasturtium also can be used in the clamshell and even lettuces have specific clamshells that fit the, the, the design of that head of lettuce. And then the herb clamshells are very small and these really help the delicate products from being shifted around and beaten banged around so it maintains the quality really, really well on those. Plastic sleeving materials like in this case on the basil and even a one pound bag of cut chives here all are very important in, in, in marketing those. Cut flowers I know also have a specific program for them to, to be shipped and marketed as well, whether you're going local or to a wholesaler. 
That's right, Bob. Uh, some of the considerations that folks uh, growing cuts need to think about is are they going to deliver and cut their, their product on the same day? Freshness is absolutely critical. Real easy to do, what you need is some clean buckets, a clean water source, some type of floral preservative to put in the water both when harvesting and taking your uh, bundles to market. If you're going into a, a farmer's market situation, perhaps you can just sell the flowers in bunches of 10. Uh, you don't need to do much packaging to them. Uh, if you're concerned about damaging the flowers, uh, you could use something like newspaper or butcher's paper, uh, heavy tissue to, to protect the flowers primarily and, and give the folks something to hang on to when they take their flowers home. If you're going into a retail situation, either a grocery store or perhaps with a florist, then you may need to use some sort of cellophane sleeve. Um, the nice part about this sleeve is that it does have air holes uh, in it, so it allows the flowers to, to breathe a little bit and reduces the condensation. Now, flowers can be uh, sold different ways. Uh, a lot of times they're sold in bunches of 10 stems. Uh, they can be a mixed bunch, such as I have here. Can be in single combinations, such as these uh, delightful sunflowers. Or when you have much larger flowers, like sunflowers, you may only sell two or three stems uh, per bunch, or even singularly, if it's a really unusual flower, perhaps like the calla lily. Again, the most important thing when harvesting and selling flowers is to keep the water clean and use a floral preservative because there's a lot of nasty bacteria that get in the water that will cause the flowers to decline. Really, it's fairly simple, uh, Bob, for folks to, to do the harvesting on the cut flower crops. And those are beautiful, and you certainly want to protect them as you take them to the marketplace. Those are, those are excellent tips. You can see here a wide array of different kinds of packages that would be used in our hydroponic industry depending on the product that they would want to want to market. The thing we want the growers to remember the most is before you even plant the first seed or the first crop make sure that you have been able to develop a successful marketing program. You know even our best growers have to have a successful marketing plan. That's the critical thing that we see out in working with growers determining whether they're profitable or not is that market.